Allow me to submit you ladies and gentlemen. A personality is comprised of three things. Your attitudes, your experiences, and your your experiences, your attitude, and your behavior. Behavior, attitude, experience. Some of you behave the way you will behave because of the experiences of yesterday. You have never overcome yesterday's experience. That's why you struggle to love today. You still hate him. You still hate her. Because you've never gone past. And yet you're believing God for her. And he says, first forget the former before we spoke about the new. Because I cannot give you my today's anointing in your yesterday's garment. So now, he says he dwells. I'm talking about activation. Okay, move verse 2. This is where the activation is. Praise the name of the Lord. So it's a, we dwell in the secret place. Uh, now, also I wanted to say something about jumping. When you jump, so when you jump, it means the Holy Spirit who is in you now, <laughs> the, the one you have now has you. God bless you. I said the one you do what? Now has what? There are many people who have the Holy Spirit, but he does not have them. Did you hear what I'm saying? You have him, but he has never had you. You run your life. Most, I remember an apostle told me in Frankfurt in, in Germany in 2014. I was running a revival and I told him, God is sending me to Kenya. He told me, why Kenya? He was a Kenyan apostle. Why of all places Kenya? Why not your country Uganda? And I told him, you see, <laughs> that is proof. Proof that I'm sent and I'm not sending myself. Because God will never send you to a familiar territory. Abraham is the, the Bible says, looking unto, the, uh, unto Abraham. The stone from he, which we have been hewn. If you want to know you are yourself as a believer, look unto Abraham. Leave your mother, leave your father's house, your country, your familiar territory. I'll take you to the place which you don't know, whose language you don't know. God told me, leave and go. And I told him, God, I only got 300 euros. That's it. I didn't know Swahili. I didn't know the language. And he tells me, go where you will not get praise. Go to the down and out. Go where you will not be celebrated. And I went to those people. Some, when I started a church, we struggled for three, four months without a church toilet. And this is one of our prayer points. Father, put, blind the eyes of the Lord. Hide, blood of Jesus, hide this, um, uh, this facility so that the health doctors will not see us. Why? Because we didn't have a toilet. Men would go behind the church in the bush. There was a bush. We'd go in the bush. Now the bricks we had ordered uh, for building the church toilet and we could not have money to build. Huh? Behind we had put a gunia, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, 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 something, a covering and a, a sack cloth and, uh, and then uh, the ladies would go there and Anasha would be there to ensure the ladies have gone that way. So those who don't understand, they think I went to a glamorous place. I lived several months in a green tent in a small house of a decker where a believer helped me to stay in one of the bedrooms with his son. I would crave when I had the smell of coffee, I would crave a latte. Because when I used to go to work, it was my, and the university, that was my part, part of my system. And one time I knelt and cried to the Lord in Kenya. I said, God, even the latte you have taken it away from me. You are, how much do you want to strip me? God, even a latte. You may admire my wisdom. Do you want my story? Do you want part of my crush? <laughs> Are you listening to me? Coming away from that. Are you listening? It says, I will say of the Lord. Somebody hear me. 
Do you hear? It's a, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Even if you exercise all these things. Are you hearing me? You dwell in the secret place of the Most High. But what? Listen. Verse 2 is activation of your right. <laughs> Don't you see? It's, I will say. It is what you say that puts you into a place of protection. I will serve the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortress in him. Are you hearing me? So that's when I discovered that I must pray for my marriage, my children, my spouse, all my sons in the Lord, those who serve alongside with me. Because truly, when anyone connected to you and dear near to you suffers, it will affect you. It affects you. It affects you. So before you start blaming the devil, did you do your intercessory work of consistently protecting in the closet your children, your marriage? Or you expect it is automatic? Do you think this church can automatically grow? Or do you think it will be automatically protected because it is a house of God. Are you hearing me? Now there is a virus released. Hmm? Demonically. From the labs. They know what they're doing. I don't have time to repeat all that. You go if you want. And look the rebuilder's house. Our church thingy. And you look for the message. Now listen. <laughs> you think you can just stay here and say this. this um, that coronavirus is out there. Assumption. Are you hearing me? Tell your friend assumptions. Are massive exploits. Of distortion in communication. You assume. You be covered. You don't assume. You intend to be covered. You are purposefully. You decree it every day. You speak it over your household. Over your city. Over your church. Over those who are near and dear to you. You hear me? My Muslim family. I love them. Though they don't love me. I love them. If one of them hurts, it hurts me. So I cover them every day in prayer and pray for their salvation. I have covered them for 26 years of my salvation. And in 26 years, I've gotten just one soul. I'm believing God for more. Do you hear what I'm saying? Some of you say, wow, oh, 26, only one soul. Yeah, is worth everything. Shout hallelujah. Now, when you pray, now, are you hearing me? Some thought on prayer. I'm giving you a thought. You hear me? When you pray, pray when you feel like, tell your neighbor, tell him, pray when you feel like praying. Pray when you don't feel like praying. And you pray until you feel like praying. Tell him, pray when you don't feel like praying. Pray when you don't feel like praying and pray until you feel like. When you start to pray until you feel like you're praying, now you have arrived. Lift up your right hand and pray for yourself. Say, my father, my maker, make me an addict of prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, may God enable you to be addicted to prayer. This prayer you have just prayed, you find yourself praying in the kitchen, praying in the bathroom, praying everywhere. That's an addict of prayer. May God make you an addict of prayer in Jesus' name. You will pray on the buses, you will pray on the train. Now I'm not saying, I'm not saying be spooky. Like on the train. No, 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 no. Wisdom. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Uh, as I'm about to close, let me tell you this. Are you hearing me? Now, all God's champions of the Bible, all God's champions of the Bible who are prayer warriors with a strong, with the strong prayer altars. 
The strength of your altar is what determines the strength of your prayer. Ask your neighbor, how strong is your prayer altar? You know, yesterday we decided to ask our children if they understand the term altar. And our children surprised us. One of them, Nevea, said, uh, they are moving altars. Of course, they are moving altars and they are static altars. And then we asked, who is the moving altar? The moving what? Your altar, the altar you don't service is the altar that will never serve you. You see, wherever I go, are you listening to me? I am here. Don't you think I am here because you prayed for me? My prayer altar that I service is one ministering. I'm ministering from the altar that I service. My personal altar is me. Where my heart is the altar, the launch pad. It is the state and the quality of your heart that determines the strength of your altar. Your heart is an altar. Don't you know First Corinthians chapter 3? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the spirit of the living God? Huh? Who lives in you? Where there is a temple, there is an altar. If I am the temple, the heart is the altar. What is an altar? It's the launch pad. It is a, a, a spiritual transactional place. Where things are transacted from the realm of the super into the natural. You seek consent. If you are submitted under this ministry. And whatever churches you come from. Don't you start an altar in your family. If it is your personal family altar. Only your family. You're not inviting anybody from church. It's okay. You don't need to, to welcome pastor to do it. Because there is a personal altar and a family altar. And this is an altar. Now your personal altar and your church altar. Uh, and your family altar feeds from your church altar. It is this altar that empowers your altar. Now, if you now go against this altar, your altar is polluted at home and contaminated. Now, imagine bringing people to a place that is contaminated. So, what is the normal procedure if you want? You come to the pastor, you seek authorization. Pastor comes as the authority of God and officially launches that altar in the realm of the spirit gives you legal right and authority to operate let me help you in the kingdom do you know why jesus says you will receive power and authority why power and authority because the two are different satan in heaven revelation chapter 12 we know what the devil did satan stole power three i mean a third of the angels a third of the angels that is power satan hijacked what Oh, come on, talk with me. Satan hijacked what? Tell your friend you can hijack power. But authority is not hijacked. That's why Satan has power but doesn't have authority. And the one who has power without authority is limited. Because power shows you how far you can go. Or, are you hearing me? Power, I mean authority is what shows you how far you can go. You say you can move up to here but you cannot exceed here. It's called authority. Now, authority is designated. It's not hijacked. Authority is designated, not hijacked. Who gave you the authority to operate what you're operating? When you're not operating on authority, you're operating in disorder. The last time I checked, 1 Corinthians 14.33, you see, the spirit of God is not the author of confusion in all the churches. If he's not the author of confusion, the devil is the author of confusion. Been inspired by the message you have just watched? Maybe it's time for you to bless others too. Remember, it's is just one click. Replay the video clip. Like and share with your friends on the social platforms available. Together, let's use this message to touch lives and the globe at large. Welcome to Turk, the acronym of the early risers cry. Join Apostle MMK as he reawakens the nations to the call of prayer. Connecting our globe, reigniting the nation to the call of prayer. Every midnight hour, 
with Apostle, MMK, do not, allow the roster, to awaken the morning, before you, remain blessed.